want to start with about St. Colman. There's two characters in South Galway who dominate most of the tales. One is St. Colman Makua, the patron of the diocese of Kilmakua, and the other is King Gura, who is reputed to be the most generous man in Ireland. So much so, his right arm grew longer than his left from giving gold to the poor. And he was a 7th century king of Connacht who gives his name to Gort. Gort in Ishagora, the field island of Gora. And you might ask, where is there an island in Gort? But there was an island in the river where he had his fortress. He also gives his name to Dungura in Kinvara, which was another royal fort. So to start with, in the days before Gora and Coleman, Gora's father was King of Connacht, and he too resided in South Galway. There was a prophecy made that one of his tribe was going to have a son that was going to be more famous than the king himself. He was jealous. There was one woman in his tribe who was pregnant. Her name was Rena. And he believed that she was going to have this child that was going to be more famous than the king or his sons. So he got his soldiers to go and get her. She fled, but they caught up with her, and they brought her here to Kiltartan, down to Paul Gielid, which is the rising in the river just below the fields here. They got a stone, they tied it round her neck, and they threw her into the pool and left her for dead. As she sank down deeper and deeper into the water, she prayed to God to save her and her unborn child. As she said in the Irish language, Gialin, God save us. And with that a miracle happened. The stone floated. And she came back to the surface. She clambered up on the bank and she escaped northward as far as Corker. And there she found an ash tree. She lay down exhausted and gave birth to a child. Now it so happens that two monks had a dream or a vision that they had headed south. They come across a miraculous happening. One of these monks was lame and the other was blind. And they came down towards Parker. They found Rena with a newborn. She told him her story. Obviously a miracle. They decided that they should christen this child. Having no water, the layman got his staff and banged it on the ground. And with that, water came forth, a well. They christened this boy Coleman. Now before they left, they flee away to safety to the north. The blind man washed his eyes in the well. And as they headed towards the north, they came as far as where Laban is today. And it said that the blind man eyesight was restored and again in the Irish language he said law born bright day mm. bright day and you can only just go down to the Kiltartan church to see the stained glass windows and tell the story now say Coleman was raised and a young man he joined the church and he obviously did quite well for himself because there's a church in the Aran Islands called after him Champel Machdua his second name is Machdua the son of Dua we don't know much about Dua. So that little church, Champel Machdua, is right at the foot of Don Ingesa on the Hard Isles, on Ishmore. But for some reason he decided to leave it all behind. He got in a small boat and he rowed across Galway Bay to the Burren, which of course was very close to where he had originated from. He took up residence in a cliff on the side of Sleeve Parrot which is the largest hill you see here as you look across the park. He said to have stayed there seven years by himself, praying at one with God, living off what he could find in the forest. He had three creatures who accompanied him. The first was a cockerel, and every morning the cockerel, cockerel would crow at first light, but it was time to get up to read the good book. He also had a mouse, and the mouse stayed in his shoulder. So if he was reading the good book and he started to fall asleep, the mouse would scratch him on the ear and wake him up. And he had a fly. And the fly had the good sense to walk under the words in the good book. So if a bird cried or sang and he looked away, the fly would mark his spot. <coughs> a 
one time a student came to see it. Probably not much older than you guys. And this student came to learn off the holy man. And also to cook his meals and go to the well for water. And it happened to be Easter time. And as tradition, they fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. On Easter Sunday, St. Coleman sent the student out to find some food. And he searched all around the woods nearby, but could find nothing, only a few herbs. And I guess this young student began to question his faith. What sort of God is this? Here we are praying for 40 days and 40 nights in the barn, and we have nothing to feast Easter Sunday. It's not fair, God. The king of Connacht, at this time Gura, had replaced his father as king of Connacht is enjoying a feast down in his palace at Dungura with all his family and friends. This is not fair, God. St. Coleman said, God will provide. Sure enough, at Dungura, in the banquet hall, Gura was with all his friends and family, sat around a huge banquet with all the finest foods coming out on plates. The servants were leaving them down the table in front of them. At that moment, St. Coleman said, God will provide. A miracle happened. The plates lifted up off the table and flew out the window, almost by magic, to the king's amazement. What did the king do? He got his horses and he mounted his horses, and they followed the plates as they flew out to the village of Kinvara. His men followed. As the children on the street saw the king following the plates, they too followed, like the Pipe Piper, the cats, the dogs on the street followed the plates. And the plates flew up the mountains towards the cave where St. Coleman and the student was. And of course, the student saw this plates of food coming. And he thought all his Christmases, or Easter's, were coming at once. And they landed in front of them. And he was ready to eat his fill. Coleman said, wait till we see whence they've come. And sure enough, they could see the king coming up the valley with his men. And Coleman worked a miracle. He stuck the king's horses to the bare limestone rock that he find in the burn. The people were stuck to the rock. The cats, the dogs, those on horseback couldn't get off their horses. It's a little place in the rock up there, close to Sleep Car, that to this day is called Bohornemisa, the road of the dishes. And you can see the footprints, and local people will point them out to you as the footprints of the horses and the king's men and all the people who would follow him. Now the student ate his fill, and he ate so much, he died on the spot. And he's buried up there, as we are. You can go and see his grave. Gura pleaded with Coleman, please release us. Please release my family and friends. I'll build you a church. I'll build you a monastery, anything you want. Coleman agreed that he would release them if they would build him a monastery. And he told Gora that he would tell him the site where he wished to build. So Coleman left Sleep Parent and he walked the countryside of South Galway. And just as when he came to the spot where Kilmacliwa is today, his belt or his girdle fell to the ground. Maybe his trousers too, we don't know. <laughs> and this was seen as a sign from God that this was the spot. And Gora held his word. He gave him the men and the money and all he needed to build the first monastery at Kilmacduwa, which stands today. And that is how Kilmacduwa came to be found. So that's the story of St. Paul.